This is T.H. Cohane for Solar Cities and for Envisage, the Environmental Sustainability and Justice League of Mercy College. We're at Janice and Dave Kelsey's home in Pennsylvania, and we're looking at the now completed winterized Solar Cities IBC tank biodigester system. This is uh, this is the slurry bucket or the fertilizer bucket out, and it does look like we've lost the pipe in here somewhere. So that's uh, something to deal with. Here it is, it just came out. So it's just because we were pulling the tarp off, so we'll have to be careful with that. Mm. That's just an overflow. There we go. And we didn't glue it in because we wanted to, to be able to work with it in the future. So what you have is you've got two tanks that fill up with fertilizer overflow. There is a, a, a valve here at the bottom of the tank that you can see that then goes down. And as this thing fills with fertilizer, it comes out and goes out to the garden here where you can see lovely, very rich tomatoes down by where the overspill is. So there's a little bit of breakfast for you. Right here. Good tomatoes. The tomatoes are doing well. See the, the weeds have gone, uh, gotten incredibly high because of the fertilizer as well, because it hasn't been tended. But we used a lot of those weeds from this area here to insulate the tank using them as compost. Down here at the first uh, two thirds of the compost that surrounds it, which is about a two foot uh, wall of compost, is cow manure and straw which heats up a lot. Then we have a layer of the weeds that we weeded from the garden. And then we have more compost and straw so that there's a mix, a layering effect. And then we've covered the top from about here to the very top, covered the digester with wood chips. And they are acting as a good thermal barrier and they themselves will also compost. The tanks on the inside, there's two IBC tanks and those tanks are completely wrapped in this uh, in this uh, insulation that's double-sided silvered with a type of uh, polystyrene or something inside in it, sort of like a sandwich, and that is going to help as a radiant heat barrier. And then we've got the wood chips over that, and they're nice and warm actually. And then we put a tarp, a silvered tarp, which helps keep the moisture in and keep the heat in and keeps this pile composting and. We set this up on September 15th, which was just uh, two days ago. Got it finished yesterday on the 16th of September 2014. And we want to see how long this pile generates heat and if that's enough heat to keep the digester at productive temperatures. Uh, we are now at about 19, 20 degrees inside and we're hoping we can get it up uh, close to 30 degrees Celsius, which would be really nice. Um, it doesn't need any maintenance in terms of the spillover because these valves are open and when you feed it, it automatically rises. Obviously the gas also is just a passive system. We have valves to these PVC bags from Fuxin Biogas Company in China that we imported. And so we're just coming out to a T and then in each bag is independently valved and then we bring these over to the porch to do the cooking. In the future, we'll run longer lines right from here and we can cook without moving the bags. And that's just a matter of buying another tea and a valve and running that in. So we're getting performance. Uh, yesterday, this bag was flat and this bag was almost flat and overnight, even though it was down to about uh, 10, 14 degrees Celsius overnight. It got very cold last night. The bags are filling. So we're getting some slow digestion. This has got a step up and you open these feeding buckets here. And this is where you put the ground up food. You don't eat, it goes inside. And uh, so you can feed Gertrude and you can feed Lawrence here. And that goes down into the digesters. And so you just pour, you open these up and you come with a bucket of warm water and food that you ground up using a food grinder and you pour that in each of these. That pressure, when these are filled with liquid slurry food waste, then helps to push the gas out, which then goes 
down and into the bags. And then uh, because water seeks its own level, when these are filled with ground up food waste and water here, it'll start to fill the overspill buckets there and then it'll spill its way into the garden. This has been designed so that it's easy to remove this fencing once the compost has given up all of its heat and turned back into soil and then that soil gets put on the garden and then new compost can be put in. Uh, improvements would be having a hatch down at the bottom around so that you could pull out old compost once it's turned into soil and just keep adding new and that's how most compost bins work. You pull out the spent fuel if you like as dirt from the bottom as you add more waste material at the top and it settles down because it will begin to shrink down as the uh, as the organic carbon is uh, turned into soil and the energy is taken out and released as heat. So this is a Jean Payne or Jean Pain method from the 1970s in France where the forester had a biogas system sitting in a mound of compost that he used to heat the digester and produced gas for his truck and he also heated his home uh, and the hot water and air with coils that went through but it was a much bigger pile. There's a small pile just to keep this digester heated should we want to heat the inside of the digester, you can see the digester poking its head out there because of the, the uh, Protex um, uh, insulation. Should we uh, want to heat that actively, we have heating coils, PEX heating coils running through the digester and there is an in and there is an out and we can put hot water through those coils. We intend to have a solar hot water system with a circulation pump and when it reaches a certain temperature, a thermostat will turn on the hot water and circulate it through and let it cool off inside heating up the tanks. So that's here for doing that. And we can also um, put a greenhouse on it and that's one of the things that the Kelseys are looking at is having a hoop house over it so that it can stay warm all the cold Pennsylvania winter. We don't know how severe winters are going to get with climate change effects. Seems like there's no more fall and no more spring anymore. You have summer and you have winter. Last night it started getting winter like we were wearing jackets, even though the day was fairly warm. So that's the thing. And then you cover it with a tarp. And as you can see, the tarp is very moist. It keeps the water vapor in as the heat draws it out of the pile, keeps it wet, keeps it composting. We do remove it uh, during warmer days because we don't want it to get soggy. Um, so all in all, it looks like we got a, a good system here and the food grinder is over on this side of the property. Ideally you would have your food grinder just in your kitchen and a pump and a, a pipe going out. Uh, they haven't done that yet because they'd have to put a hole in the wall and they're not ready to do that yet. So the food grinder is right here and they simply grind the stuff here and, and uh, plug the thing in. Here's an old burrito and an old apple. Uh, and there it comes right down there. So you basically grind up your food. Bring it over here, biodigester. Let's see who we're going to feed today, Gertrude or Lawrence. I guess we'll give each of them a little bit of breakfast here. There we go, Lawrence, and here we go, Gertrude. Naming them is not a bad idea because they are animals. What you basically have is an artificial cow or an artificial sheep or goat or elephant, however you want to look at it. This one's like an elephant, given how big it is. And you feed them and they fart. They fart from here. And then they pee from over there into the garden. And that's how you get your nitrogen-rich fertilizer, liquid fertilizer, into your garden to grow new food again. And then you eat the food and take the parts you don't eat and grind them up. And these also can be used with toilet waste. So you could take the parts you did eat and then put them in here. That'd be something you might want to consider. Uh, you wouldn't want to necessarily use uh, ground crops if you were using human waste for aesthetic and other reasons. But uh, 
health reasons if anybody came over who was ill for example it's perfectly safe if you're not ill but if somebody came over who was ill you might think twice about eating the food directly so for that you would then further compost the slurry that came out right now we're just using food waste and then the system works and it creates that cycle and I'll show you the stove Uh, we'll post a video cooking on breakfast on it once Janice is back. By the way, we're starting to make our own bags here. This is a, a bag that Janice's friend Dave just made, PVC storage bag for the gas. This one has uh, an inlet for each of the digesters, and it has an outlet for the cook stove and an outlet for an electric uh, generator for backup energy when there's a power outage. And that's better than the... Uh, original design which only has one inlet and outlet and then you have to get T's and valves and stuff. So we're working on that and then you have the Pusheen stove here and you have the pump which then pumps the gas out of the bags and gives you a nice flame. So we'll check back in with you in, uh, in a few minutes once we get breakfast set up and show you cooking on biogas.